If we substitute if within bracket s equal to 1 by s in this transfer function model, we get this. Now see our target is to find the f in time domain. So that's why we are you see, going with partial fraction arrangement. Okay. <clears throat> now, if we take the inverse of Laplace transform, what will be the expression for y? Anyone? If we take the inverse of Laplace transform, what should be the expression for y in time domain? Uh, Kp minus Kp into e power minus t by tau Cp, tau p. Mm, yes, correct. What's your number? Sir, 19CH30036. You see, this is the expression. This is the equation for y in time domain, yt. Okay, so uh, this was the question of from one of your friends that what is the use of transfer function? Again, it is shown here. What is the use of transfer function? If you have the transfer function, a straightforward answer is this transfer function is basically used to study the dynamic response of a process. Okay. Transfer function is nothing but the model of the process in Laplace domain. And this model or this transfer function model is used to investigate the dynamic response of that process. Now question is how you can do that? It is shown step by step, you see. First you need to consider certain input change. Now against that input change, what should be the response of the process that we can investigate from here? So let me again uh, mention what, what we basically do. This is the transfer function which is either given or available to us. Now you just consider some step change or some other input change in F then take the Laplace tra inverse of Laplace transform and find the output in time domain. In the next step, you just need to plot y versus t. In the final step, you need to plot y versus time t. Okay, that plot basically represents the dynamic response against a certain change in the input variable. So by this way, we can investigate the dynamic response of the process if we have the transfer function model. <clears throat> okay, now this is this transfer, this yt expression we got when we introduce a unit step change. But if we introduce a step change with magnitude a, in that case, our final expression for y becomes this. Okay. First expression for the output y in time domain we get when we consider a unit step change in f. The second expression we get when our state change has the magnitude of capital A. Now let us come to this uh, dynamic response, how it looks like. So from this 
we can start with this expression y t equal to a k p into 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau p. So first thing is that we can represent this equation again in dimensionless form. That means I can write y by a k p in the left hand side equal to 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau p. I repeat to plot this equation which we got for y in time domain, we can make it dimensionless. Okay, so how we can do this? We can keep y divided by a k p in the left hand side. And in the right hand side, 1 minus exponential of minus t by tau p. And then we can plot y divided by a k p versus t by tau p. We just draw this uh, graphical representation. Fine, I think uh, you have drawn this dynamic response. In this, uh, what, I mean, y-axis is considered for y divided by a k p, and along the x-axis we are considering t by tau p. Okay, so it is obviously dimensionless quantities both. Now this red color represents the dynamic response. Okay. This red color represents the dynamic response. Now, first question is uh, how I have written this one value, maximum value for YKP, I have written one. How? How we can get this? Do you have any answer, student? I repeat the question. 
the maximum value for y divided by a k p is written here one question is how we get this value one the function is one minus exponential of something and exponential is always positive so maximum value is one okay so it should be less than one I mean, uh, yeah, directly can you tell how this is one? Conceptually, okay. And uh, I mean, you tell the procedure so that we can use this procedure for all processes. Let us extract the procedure to find the ultimate value of the response. This is actually called the ultimate value of the response one. How we can get the ultimate value of the response for all types of processes? So the derivative with respect to time will be zero for maximum. Derivative with respect to time would be zero. Like we here we don't. Yeah. Take mm. the derivation against uh, t by uh, tau p. Mm. Yeah, I got. Yes. See, ultimate value of the response we can get if we consider time t tends to infinity. Okay. If we consider time t tends to infinity, then we get ultimate value of the response. It is like final value theorem. Recall the final value theorem we have discussed during our Laplace transform. Okay, so that is the way to get this value maximum value one. Now, what is the answer for this? Uh, anyway, let us come to find uh, how we get uh, 0 0.632. But before that, uh, let us write a couple of uh, points. So our first point is the first order lag system is self-regulating. The first order lag system is self-regulating. So it indicates that the process reaches a new steady state value and uh, stabilizes there. This first order lag system is self-regulating. It means it indicates that the process reaches a new steady state value and remains there. To understand this concept self-regulation, one example is given here, you see. This is a simple liquid tank system. Okay, here our input is Fi and output is as usual, if not. Now, suppose there is an increase in Fi. That means, if Fi increases, liquid height in the tank increases. If liquid height in the tank increases, the hydrostatic pressure increases, which in turn leads to increase F0. Okay. Let me repeat this. If Fi increases, then height of liquid in the tank increases. If height of tank in, in the uh, height of liquid increases, then hydrostatic pressure of this liquid increases, which in turn leads to increase F0. 
that means if not uh, if increases what will happen this height will gradually be stabilized to new steady state value see we cannot get back our previous steady state we will get a new steady state value so is there any way to get back the previous steady state value student we are getting a new steady state value is there any way to get back the previous steady state i discussed this issue before also it is possible if we employ a controller okay now you understood what is this self regulating process in fact uh, we have mentioned non self regulating process for the ramp function so it is clear if f not does not change okay irrespective of the change of fi then it is non self regulating case in the last example we have considered one constant replacement pump which basically leads to fix this output f not Okay, so that's why that was non-self-regulating system. Our second point is: let us find the slope at time t equal to zero. Slope of response at time t equal to zero is one. Can you verify this? You have the expression for y that is a k p into one minus exponential minus t by tau p. using that equation you find the slope at time t equal to 0 i repeat the question we have the expression for y in time domain that is y t equal to a k p into 1 minus exponential minus t by tau p using this equation can you find the slope of response at time t equal to 0 verify and let me confirm okay this one this coming one okay hmm anyone got one the slope is one at time equal to zero okay so the slope is one so you know if we maintain this slope then what should be the value for t by tau p if this initial slope is maintained what should be the t by tau p value you see the graphical representation i have shown with one uh, green color straight line the slope you know ultimate value of the response you know what is then tau by t by tau p
You note down this uh, statement. Is this fine? Slope is one. Ultimate value of the response is one. So T by tau P is one. Fine. Now if T by tau P is one, how much is this Y divided by KP? Can you find from this equation? And let me know. Let us use this equation and substitute t by tau p equal to 1. So, what is the value for y divided by a k p? I repeat my question. If T by tau P is considered one in this equation, then what is the value of Y divided by A K P we obtain? Anyone can tell? 0 0.632. Hmm. What's your number? 19 CX 10047. Yes. So you can go back to the plot then you see. I have written 0 0.632. OK, 63.2% we reach when our T by tau P value is 1. When T by tau P value is 1, we reach 63.2% of the ultimate response. Can you find similarly for T by tau P equal to 2, 3 and 4? I repeat my question. We have obtained 63.2% when T by tau P equal to 1. Similarly, uh, let us know this percentage when T by tau P is equal to 2, 3, and four. Let me know the values quickly. T by tau P is two. How much you got? Zero point eight six four. Mm, correct. For three. Zero point uh, nine five zero. Mm, and four. Zero point nine eight one six. Yeah, yeah. You see the values now. Anyone else got these values? Yes, sir. Yes, good. So you are understanding what is this percentage value. OK, so when t equal to 4 tau p, we are close to our ultimate response. 98% we cover. OK, and this fourth point I already mentioned. 
it is uh, indicating how to calculate the ultimate value of the response. Mm. This time T is basically our operational time, operating time. OK. You, you can note down that this T is basically our operating time. I mean the, the final T, final T. How long we are operating the process? So T starts from zero to T final. OK. Now let us come to this topic. Variable time constant and gain. Earlier uh, we have uh, discussed this tau p and kp. Usually they are constant quantities. In fact, kp we call as uh, you know steady state gain or a static gain. But still, how it is a variable that we want to see. Time constant and gain, how they can also vary. That we want to discuss now. So for this, let us pick up this uh, simple example liquid tank system again. Our input is F i and output is F, which is proportional to say root H. So naturally our model is becoming nonlinear because of considering if proportional to root H. This is the nonlinear model which in fact we got previously. This nonlinear model we got previously. Now after linearization, we have this expression. After linearization using the Taylor series expansion, we have this linearized model. <clears throat> Can you tell me now what is the expression for tau p and kp based on this linearized model equation? Let me know the expression for tau p and kp. <clears throat> Tool number 17 CH 1 triple zero 1 Abbas. Abbas is there. 18 CH 3 double zero 1 6. 19 CH 1001, 19 CH 1001, 19 CH 1001, one triple zero seven Adriza Rao Adriza Roy one triple zero eight Aksai Agarwal one triple zero nine Anik Mandal. Yes, sir. What is the expression for tau p? So tau p is uh, two into root root over of h is mm -hmm. into a. Mm -hmm. That's it. Where? Uh, yes, sir. Divided by alpha. Yes, divided by alpha. Is it, sir? Yeah. 
ओके सॉरी वन डबल जीरो वन जीरो वन डबल जीरो इलेवन थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सेवेंटीन रोल नंबर वन डबल जीरो वन सेवन वन एट वन नाइन टू जीरो टू वन टू 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 सिक्स टू सेवन टू एट थ्री वन थ्री टू रोल नंबर थ्री थ्री राहुल नाथ थ्री फोर राकेश थ्री सिक्स ऋषभ कुमार थ्री एट वन डबल जीरो थ्री नाइन वन डबल जीरो फोर जीरो साहिल वन डबल जीरो फोर वन फोर टू फोर थ्री सक्सम फोर फाइव संकल्प बोस फोर सिक्स फोर एट फाइव जीरो फाइव वन फाइव फोर फाइव सिक्स यस सर यस सर और सर नंबर नाइनटीन सी एच वन डबल जीरो फाइव फोर tell what is the expression for kp sir for kp it is 2 into root over hs by a yes fine you are subrajit bag no yes sir subrajit bag yeah correct <coughs> can we say now tau p and kp they are variable if yes how anyone can give the answer you see the title topic is variable gain and time constant can we say based on these two expressions tau p and kp might be variable yes sir like uh, when we vary the uh, f then in uh, hs will change which changes yes. tau p and kp correct what's your number 30018 yeah so it will change because uh, in fact in the last example in fact with this same example we have seen that <clears throat> if there is any change in fi suppose there is increase in fi height increases height increases means i mentioned hydrostatic pressure increases so according the f increases and the process reaches a new steady state so st if steady state changes then definitely tau p and kp also change so that is the way we have written that this tau p and kp may also be a variable quantity <clears throat> in that sense only yeah this is all about first order system student if you have any question you can ask me this is all about our first order system if you have any question doubt you can ask me otherwise you will go to the next topic okay let us start this topic at least first order system we have started now let us extend our discussion to second order systems first order system we just completed so let us extend this study to second order system <clears throat> you see the definition the similar definition was given for first order system as well so here we have written the similar definition for second order system <clears throat> and 
అండి and you know your syllabus for uh, the taste and monday is till first order system your syllabus for the taste and monday coming monday is uh, at the end of first order system so second order system is one whose output y is modeled by a second order differential equation and we have taken here one general second order equation you see a2 d2 y dt square plus a1 dy dt plus a not y equal to bft clearly we have just added the second order term you see if you compare this governing equation with first order system general equation this is the additional term which is added here a2 d2 y dt square okay now we are dividing both sides a not see always you try to uh, keep this y term uh, the coefficient of y term 1 okay because transfer functions are like that always you try to keep this y term alone i mean coefficient of y should be 1 now let us represent this equation in this form in fact this is the general form we use for deriving the transfer function tau square d2y dt square plus 2 zeta tau dy dt plus y equal to kp into ft so if we compare the last two differential equations we have these correlations If we compare the last two equations, then we get these correlations for tau, two zeta tau, and kp. And by definition, tau is the natural period of oscillation. zeta is damping factor and kp is as usual steady state gain or static gain by definition tau is the natural period of oscillation zeta is damping factor and kp is as usual the steady state or static gain okay now what is the transfer function you just take the laplace transform of this last ordinary differential equation and let me know the transfer function of this second order process i repeat you consider this last ordinary differential equation which is represented in terms of tau square 2 zeta tau and kp take laplace transform rearrange and get the expression for transfer function what is that let me know
anyone got transfer function You consider Y and F, they are both deviation variable. Consider Y and F deviation variable. The transfer function is KP divided by Tau squared x squared plus two side tau x plus one. Hmm, correct. What's your number? And C S one double zero four seven. See, this is the equation. Agree? Now you note down these points. A tau determines the speed of the response. Tau determines the speed of the response. And zeta, I think you know, that is a damping factor. The meaning of damping is, I think, well known to everyone. Small value of zeta means little damping, which indicates large amount of oscillation. So what is zeta for the last plot? Anyone? What is the zeta value for last plot? Zero. Hmm, correct. What do you mean by zeta less than zero? For the last plot, zeta is zero. Now question is, what do you mean by zeta less than zero sir unstable system unstable yeah that means what oscillation with oscillation with last for a longer time increasing increasing In amplitude yes increasing amplitude correct what's your number so 19ch 1009 hmm. you see these are the three Examples three triple zero nine. So one triple zero nine. Oh, one. Okay. Onic. So I agree with this. Three values for zeta. Zeta equal to zero means undamped system. 
So oscillation with constant amplitude. Less than zero means growing amplitude. And greater than zero means stable system. Oscillation with decreasing amplitude. Okay, that's it. So be prepared for Monday exam and syllabus as I told, excluding this second order system. First order system will be there. Any question? OK, thank you then. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you to everyone.